All right, this is the Limpopo 2021 trial exam projectile motion question, question three. Uh, this question says the stone is thrown vertically upwards from the ground. It passes a two meter high window whose sill is 10 meters above the ground. So here's the 10 meters above the ground and here is the window which is two meters in height. It says the stone takes 0 0.15 seconds to travel the two meter height of the window. The diagram below is not drawn to scale. So they've told you the delta T and the delta Y for this section of the flight here only in the question, okay? We don't know anything else except for the fact that the ball, it says here, neglect the effects of air resistance, i.e. the stone moves under the inf influence of gravitational force only. So the moment we know that, we know the acceleration is only the acceleration due to gravity. So the acceleration is going to be 9.8 meters per second per second. If we say up is positive, that will then be a negative number. Okay, so let's have a look at what has to go on on the question here. It says to write down the term which describes the bracketed statement. So now the answer here is free fall. If you look in um, your definitions, this is basically the exact definition of free fall. After the amendments to the memo came out, they allowed you to say projectile motion because it is projectile motion. The stone itself is the projectile, but the ball is undergoing projectile motion. But the correct answer is free fall because the stone is moving only under the influence of gravitational force. It says, use equations of motion to calculate the speed with which the stone is thrown. Now, with the information that we've got here, here's my stone here, it leaves the ground with a certain initial velocity here. And this is what we are being asked to calculate. The problem here is the only thing we know about the stone is for the section of flight past the window here. Okay, so some people assume that the top of the window is maximum height, but the top of the window is not in fact maximum height. This ball goes up and it goes past the window and it keeps going to some other height and then it drops back down to the ground again, okay? So you may not assume that this two meters, this delta Y leads you to maximum height, okay? So what do you have to do? You have to find the speed with which the stone is thrown and it's five marks. So the moment you see five marks, you know you're not going to get away with only one calculation. So if we have a look here, we only have A, delta T, and delta Y. So if we look in our equations of motion, we can't use the first one here. We can't use the second one here because we only have um, A, delta Y, and delta T. So we are left with this equation of motion here, which we should be using in the vertical plane. So if we do this, delta Y, equals vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared. We will not be calculating this vi down here. We will in fact be calculating the vi over here where it is going to just under the window over here. The vi for this two meters of flight by the window. But that's fine because we know we've got to make two calculations and if we know a vi here, and we also know this delta y over here is 10, we are going to be able to work it out. So let's use the uh, data from the question. Delta y is two, we are looking for vi, delta t is comma one five. We said up is positive a little while ago, so my acceleration is going to be negative 9.8, and then this is zero comma one five squared. So if we put all of this into our calculator, we get 2 equals vi 0 comma 1 5 and then this is minus 0 comma 1 1 0 oh, 2 5. One of the common problems is that you forget the minus sign on the acceleration because the ball is traveling upwards but acceleration wants it to come downwards and then the moment you have the wrong sign here you will end up with the wrong answer. So when the minus comes over to the other side you end up with a larger value there. So if we put this in our calculator, 
we get an initial velocity of 14,0683. Now do not round this number off. Keep this number in your calculator because we are not finished the calculation, okay? We have to find more information about this part of the ball's flight, okay? We have to say, what is this VI when the stone left the ground, okay? So now we have this VI that we found for the two meters suddenly becomes VF. It will be the final velocity for this 10 meter flight path. And we are looking for this initial velocity at the beginning. So if we go back to the equations of motion, we have a VF, we are looking for a VI and we have a delta Y, okay? So VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta Y. So the final velocity is what we calculated to be the initial velocity of the previous part of the flight, okay? VI is what we are looking for, don't forget the squared. And again, the acceleration is downwards while the ball is traveling upwards. And we know that the window was 10 meters above the ground. So we end up with VI squared equals uh, if we take this over to the other side, we get 393,918. And now to find your answer, you just need to root that. So if we root that, we end up with 19,85 meters per second. And now the question states the speed. Speed is a scalar. And as it's a scalar, we don't need to put the direction. If they ask the velocity, we would have to write 19,85 meters per second upwards okay now it says to you what is the maximum height that the ball reaches the stone reaches sorry so that is up here so we know a vi okay we can do this two ways okay we know that at maximum height the velocity is going to be zero so you can either use this answer that you've just calculated for when the stone left the ground or you can use um, the value of the velocity from here and then add the displacement on but I'm going to use this initial velocity we calculated and again I'm going to use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta Y okay my final velocity is zero because the ball is at maximum height my initial velocity is going to be that 19,85 squared. But because we had it in the equation here already as squared, I'm just going to substitute this value straight back into this equation, which is why I didn't round it earlier. Plus 2, negative 9.8, and we are looking for delta y. So if you put that all in your calculator, you will end up with minus 393,918 is going to be equal to negative 19,6 delta y. And if we then do some division there, we will end up with delta y equals 20,10 meters. And we should really write the maximum height above the ground that the stone reaches is 20,10 meters. Okay, because you should always answer the question in a sentence afterwards. Now it says to you, sketch a velocity versus time graph to illustrate the motion of the stone from the moment it leaves the ground until it reaches maximum height. Take upwards as the positive direction. Clearly show the value of the initial velocity on the graph. Well, the initial velocity, we calculated it over here. It's this 19,85. And if upwards is positive, this is going to be a positive value on our graph. Now, when we think about these graphs, we have three graphs for a ball, a projectile. We have a graph of displacement time, okay? And we have a graph of, well, it's not, this shouldn't be delta y here. A graph of velocity time, okay? And we have a graph of acceleration time. And because the ball is a projectile, this is the straight line graph that is horizontal because the acceleration never changes and this value here for acceleration will be 9.8. The velocity time graph, what happens to this ball as it's going upwards? As it goes upwards, it slows down. So this velocity time graph is always a straight diagonal line and the displacement time graph 
is always the one that looks like the ball flying, which is the curved line. So they asked for this graph, which is a straight line. So we draw our axes, okay? And here will be time in seconds, and we should write up is positive. Please use your ruler. I can't use a ruler, but please use your ruler. So this axis will be velocity in meters per second. Label your axes. Now, it says to you, Sketch a velocity time graph to illustrate the motion of the stone from the moment it leaves the ground, which is time is zero, until it reaches maximum height. What is the velocity of the ball at maximum height? The velocity is going to be zero at maximum height. So this graph has to stop on the zero axis. So it's a very simple graph. It is a velocity time, so it's a straight diagonal line because up is positive. The ball is... Um, slowing down in this part of the motion so the gradient is downwards okay also because up is positive and we're going to take this value 19,85 sorry for the messy writing here 19,85 and then this is zero we've never been asked to calculate this time t so we can't put it on there but there's one mark for the 19,85 one mark for this diagonal line vertically um, vertically downwards this diagonal line downwards with a gradient of 9.8 which you don't have to draw on the graph because it's a sketch graph, and you have finally stopping the graph at zero. If you continue onwards, you cannot have the third mark. It says until it reaches maximum height, so you have to stop it there. And then finally for one mark, write down the magnitude of the acceleration of the stone at maximum height. There is only one force on this ball gravitational force it is not changing the earth does not lose any particles nothing happens so the answer here is 9.8 meters per second per second acceleration is meters per second to the minus two it's meters seconds to the minus two it is 9.8 and they said the magnitude so we don't need to put the sign but if they asked it otherwise, we would have to write downwards. If they said, what is the acceleration of the stone without the word magnitude, we would have to include the word downwards.